Good morning, boys and girls. This is Mr. Mace, and I'm here today to teach you a lesson about how to solve unit pricing problems and graphing the rate tables that are associated with them. So as you are looking at my screen here right now, you should see that we are looking at uh, three tables, but they do have some writing over the top of them. It says, please don't write anything in your student workbook at this time, because we want to establish what our vocabulary is as we move forward here. So you should be looking at page 19 of your math expressions book, but just kind of uh, opening up to that and following along in a very short period of time, we will actually be solving uh, these tables and then eventually graphing those tables, um, at least one or two of them together to uh, get us to understand the link and how we can use those things to our advantage. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to understand what the term unit price means. And obviously the word price in that vocab term means that it, it's going to cost us something. We're going to have to pay something to buy it, okay, to pay something to own it. So we know that we're dealing with money. The word unit in this case, guys, means one. So if I want to go to the store and I want to buy one of something, uh, that is going to be its unit price. Not if I'm going to buy something in bulk, not if I'm going to buy more of one thing. That'll p play out as we look at the tables. But when I'm trying to f identify or try to find the unit price of something, I'm looking to buy just one of those things. In this case, our unit is pounds, and it's pounds of granola. So as we look at the question here, it says these three rate tables show the prices of three different kinds of granola. Each has a different unit price. Fill in the unknown values in each table. <clears throat> okay, so we are trying to first establish what is the unit price of these three types of granola, and then how can I use that knowledge to fill in the rest of the table and eventually graph that information to give me what I might deem to be the best deal in that scenario. The other three terms listed in the vocabulary in the upper right-hand corner are x-axis, y-axis, and coordinate plane, and those are all graphing terms, and we will get and talk more about them as we um, continue on with the lesson, okay? So we're not going to worry about those for right now. All right, now I'm going to change screens here, but you are going to stay on page 19, and we're going to go through these tables one at a time. You're also going to see that we have um, listed here on the side of our screen uh, what is considered to be the math board. And in class, we have some math boards that are, are whiteboard uh, related. And so if you're in class right now, you might be able to use one of the math boards. But if you're at home right now, we do not expect you to have a math board. Um, it is something that you can definitely uh, make up on a piece of scratch paper or something that you can um, try to manipulate on your own. But um, you're simply going to eventually create a very generic graph to help us understand um, the relationship between these tables. All right, so like we said before with unit rate, we are looking for the cost of one unit. Okay, so we have to identify what is the unit. In this case, the unit is pounds. Okay, in this case, pounds of granola. So as I'm looking for this, I've got to identify in the pounds of granola, where do I see the one? And I found the one right here, and luckily for us, they tell us what the unit rate is. They say that for one pound of granola, it's gonna cost us $3. Not all of our unit tables or our, our rate tables are going to show us that way, but for this one it does. It makes our life a little easier. Now, when you guys um, were younger, you might have heard these terms as being input-output tables or something along those lines where we are trying to establish what the pattern or what the rule is for each of these tables. In this case, they're kind of giving it to us by showing us the unit rate. They are saying that for every pound of granola, we are going to pay $3. That means I'm going to skip count by threes, or I'm going to multiply each of my pounds by three to determine its cost. Okay, so however you want to view that. Now, this one goes right in order. So as we go up one for each of these numbers, we are also going to go up by three for each of these numbers. So plus one means plus three on the other side. If if these were jumping around, if we went from one to five to seven to three and moved around with those numbers, then we would have to definitely do the multiplication side of things and get away from just the skip counting. This one goes chronologically. It goes in order. So we are able to easily just kind of skip count going down the left column or excuse me, the right column and uh, count up on the left side. So as we look here, if one pound costs us three dollars, 
I'm going to skip count by one on the left side to get to two pounds, and I'm going to skip count by three on the right side to realize that that's going to cost us six dollars. All right, same thing, going up one more on the left means I'm going to go up three more on the right, and three times three is nine. Okay, again, our rule is times three, or we are going to skip count by three as we go down here. So that means now, in all honesty, as we look at this, the next one, which they've given to us already, has to be 12. So let's see if it works. Three, six, nine, and 12. So we are still just a plus three on the right side, which means we are going to be a plus one on this side. And one more than three is four. The next one on the left side is a five. Three more on the right side is a 15. Six is one more than five. That means we need to be three more on the right side, which gets us to an 18. And we again are three more on the right side, which means I only need to be one more on this. And you can see a pretty easy pattern established in table one. Makes it very straightforward, makes it very easy to see. I'm counting by ones on the left, which means I'm counting by threes on the right. Like I said, as we get into this later and, and deeper into these lessons, you're going to realize that they kind of bounce around a little bit or that we skip certain numbers and we have to do more of the rule of times three. For every one on the left side, I'm going to multiply that number by three to get the outcome. Put in a number, multiply it by three, get the outcome of that number. All right? Now, I'm going to uh, skip past the graphing portion of this, we'll come back to that in a little bit, but I do want to get to the next table. Okay, and this is one of those where we're going to start identifying the skipping around. Okay, we're going to start seeing that it doesn't go up stepwise, because as I look at the numbers here, I see one, two, three, those all seem to work, but then I've got a 10 down here, and I know that if I'm counting by ones, that I'm not going to end up on 10 by that point. So now I have to figure out what the rule is or how I'm manipulating this. Now, it does again tell us what the unit rate in, what the unit rate is. Uh, luckily for us, if we buy one pound, it's going to cost us $6. So we know that our rule for this one is based on the unit rate, and it's going to be a times six for each of those things. Every time we add a pound, we're going to add $6. All right, so if I went up one here, like I did, I can simply skip count to realize that six plus six is 12. Or I can look at it by saying if I buy two pounds, each pound is gonna be $6. I can then do six times two gets me to 12. All right, same thing for the next one. Three times six gets me to 18. Now I've got to work backwards. Now they're giving me how much something is going to cost, so I have to do the opposite of what it tells me to do. So if I'm multiplying by 6 to figure out how much the dollars is, it means I need to divide by 6 to figure out how many pounds it would be. So what is 24 divided by 6? Well, that should again be consistent going up by the number 4. So I'm still counting by single pounds here. And it looks like the next one is the same because I went from 24 to 30, which is also a plus 6, which means I'm going to increase by 1 on my left side to get to a 5. So all that should be pretty easy to this point. There's nothing that's been too earth shattering in terms of how we're filling in these numbers. But the next one, like I said, it doesn't go stepwise. We don't go from 5 to 10 while counting, so we've got to use our rule. We've got to know that if I buy 10 pounds of something and each of those pounds costs $6, right up here, that my outcome is now going to be 10 times 6. Well, what is 10 times 6? That is $60. And now the next one is even more challenging because now I'm starting with that cost in dollars of 600 but now I know that I need to work backwards because my number needs to get smaller. I'm not going to have more pounds than money. So my number needs to get smaller. So if I take 600 pounds and I divide it by 6, it'll determine how many pounds I can buy for that kind of money. And in that case, that would be 100 pounds. So that one we kind of skipped around a little bit. The numbers didn't keep going up by 1s and by the same skip counting pattern. Now this third one, is even more challenging because now you can see across from our one they don't give us a unit rate they don't give us how much one is going to cost so our first thing we need to do is we need to identify the part of the column or the part of the table that has both sides filled in and in this case it is if we buy six pounds it's going to cost us thirty dollars okay so if you remember back to the last table I said um, we can go at it from either way I can start with the small number 
and get us to the larger number, or I can start at the larger number and I can divide by something to get to the smaller number. It doesn't matter which way you work with it. Each person's mind thinks of it in a different way. For me personally, I like starting at the smaller number and realizing what do I have to multiply by 6 to get me to 30. And that's going to help me set up my unit rate. That's going to help me set up my, my rule for this input-output table. So in this case, I'm looking at 6 times what gets me to 30. In this case, our rule is times 5. Or I can identify that for every pound of this granola that I buy is going to cost me $5. All right? And you can again see that we are definitely not going in order here because we are looking at a situation in which we have a 1 followed by an 8, and then we go back to a 6, and we go back to a 5 down here at the bottom. So, so it's kind of jumping around. We really definitely need to know our rule, and we need to think about, is my number getting larger, or is my number getting smaller? So on the left side, here we've got our smaller number. So if we start with the 8, if I buy 8 pounds of granola, how much is that going to cost me? Well, every pound is going to cost me $5, so 8 times 5 gets me to $40. Now the next one, you can see we got a 10 here. You might think, well, 10 times 5, that's 50. But I'm not going to buy 50 pounds of granola for $10. That's, that's the wrong relationship here. In this case, that number needs to get smaller. So I need to take that 10, I need to divide it by 5 to determine how many pounds I can buy for $10. In this case, that would be a 2. So for 2 pounds of granola, I pay $10. Now I've got the one that I already did, 6 and 30, the one that helped me establish my unit rate my unit price, all right? So now I'm down here. If I want to buy or pay $100 for granola, how much am I going to be able to buy for that? That would be 100 divided by 5. That means I'd be able to buy 20 pounds of granola. And then the last one or last two down here, I've got a $20 will buy me 4 pounds of granola, and 5 pounds of granola will cost me $25. Notice how the numbers on the left are always smaller than the numbers on the right. All right, I'm going to take a little break here, and I want you guys to be thinking, uh, trying to solve the puzzled penguin problem. Try to wrap your mind around it. It's going to look like this. And I'm going to come back and start the next video with the puzzled penguin problem, and then we're going to show you how to graph those uh, unit tables. So we are going to break this lesson up into two different videos just based on time frame here. So take a little break, try to solve the puzzled penguin problem, and then when you've done that, check back with me to determine if what you said about the puzzled penguin problem makes sense, and then we'll teach you again more specifically how to graph these unit rate tables.